Hello. In uh, this segment, we want to answer the question right down here below the circle. How are a circle's diameter and circumference related? Now, we know that the line across a circle that goes through the center from one side to the other, that's called the diameter. And we know the outside part of the circle that goes all the way around is called the circumference. Well, they're related. Um, and an ancient culture, uh, the ancient Greeks, they found out this relationship. Um, they had probably looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, say, round objects and what their diameters were across in relation to how to how uh, far it was around each round object, the circumference, they found that there was a certain proportion for every single circle. So what we're going to do here, we're going to kind of do what maybe the ancient Greeks might have seen. They may have noticed that their measurements uh, equaled a pattern. Now, let's take the soda can here, okay? We're going to measure the diameter in centimeters. So here's the centimeter part of the ruler. What I like to do is I like to put 10 on the left side here, and it's very easy just to count out from there. Okay. Now, if we look over this diameter from the widest point here to the widest point there, it's about six and a half centimeters, okay? So, soda can, six and a half centimeters. Now, if we take our little measuring band here and we measure around just like this, okay, that measurement right there if we measure it with our centimeters, it's going to come out to exactly 20 and a half centimeters. Okay, 20.5 centimeters. So the soda can worked out to a circumference of this, a diameter of this. Well, the Greeks just didn't get a pattern from looking at one thing. They looked at hundreds and hundreds of things and noticed that pattern. Now let's take this hot chocolate can. If we go ahead and we measure the bottom, I like to start at 10 and then we measure across to the very widest point. It's exactly 10 centimeters. And then if we measure around, go right about there okay and then this is going to measure out to whoa that's over 30 it's going to be 31 and a half 31 and a half centimeters around and we'll take a third round item our gallon of paint here ooh Olympic must be from the ancient Greeks okay now, if we measure across here, there I start at 10, we go over here, it's right around 16 and a half centimeters in diameter. 16 and a half. And if we measure around that can, see right there it says paint can, it's already pre-measured. That's going to come out to a grand total of 52 centimeters. Now the Greeks kind of saw that, hey look, the diameter looks like we're dividing the circumference by around three every single one of these. Okay, so what the Greeks did was They divided the circumference by the diameter to get a proportion for all circles. 
Now, let's go ahead and see how this works out. If we take 20.5 circumference divided by 6.5 diameter, we come out with about 3.15. Okay? Now, if we take 31.5 divided by 10, we just slip that decimal over one place and we get about 3.15. Okay? And then if we take 52 inches divided by 16.5, that also comes out to about 3.15. Now, my measurements were not exact, but when the Greeks did hundreds and hundreds and thousands of measurements, they found that the ratio between the circumference divided by the diameter, its average was about 3.14. Okay? Now, what that means is if we would take a diameter and start here. We could go around one diameter, two diameter, three diameter, and then a little bit extra there. 3.14. Now, 0.14 is also close to one seventh. So this is like three and one seventh, or a lot of mathematicians go 22 over seven. Now, this was not exact, it was an approximation because of this. The Greeks called this proportion pi. And they said it was about 3.14. This symbol doesn't mean equals. It means approximately close to about. Now, pi in reality, exactly. Pi goes on maybe forever. Right now, I think some scientists have actually figured out pi. Scientists or mathematicians have fit, figured it out at least to 500,000 digits and supercomputers are going beyond that. So it's at least 3.1415926. It goes on and on and on and on. So what this pi is, it showed the Greeks a pattern. For each diameter of a circle, the circumference measure measures three diameters and a little bit. Okay? So the Greeks developed a formula to find the circumference. If you know the diameter of a circle and you multiply it by pi, you can find the circumference. Now, there's two measures of pi. Decimal pi is 3.14. So to find your circumference, you take your diameter times 3.14. You can also multiply it by 22 over 7. Fraction pi is 22 over 7, and usually this is easiest when you are multiplying by a diameter that is a multiple of 7. Okay? All right. That should conclude our understanding of how the Greeks came up with the pattern of pi.